Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over three of the different tailor kits, or actually more of the tailor kits than three, but I'll touch on three of their more popular ones and kind of guide you on which tailor test kit you should get if you're going for a reagent test kit. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. And there's no question that Taylor dominates the reagent test kit market. If you're looking for a simple test kit in a way to check the test factors or chemical readings in your pool, then the Taylor test kit is the way to go. They make the easiest to use, and I'm going to say the most reliable, and overall the best reagent type test kits. You'll see them rebranded. Leslie's has a brand branded kit from Taylor, and you have the Triple Free Pools test kit that's also branded from Taylor. So Taylor definitely is the standard. Basically how the Taylor test kit works, you use a reagent to a drop test, or a tritation kind of test is what they're kind of known at in the scientific realm and basically the drop will react with the water sample and then the color you're going to get will be kind of the indicator of the chemical level whether it be alkalinity chlorine uh, ph and it'll let you know the level based on the color after you add the selected amount of drops to it and it differs per test so you have to refer to the manual and how many drops to add and when to stop when you get a color change, things like that. So Taylor makes a range of test kits. If you go to their website, you're going to see like over 100 different test kits that they make for the pool and spa industry. I think like 113 of them. But basically, there are three that I'm going to focus on here. And that's the K1005. Then you have the K2005. And then you have the K2006. Now you may see the K2005 with a C after it, or the K2006 with a, with a C after it, and this indicates commercial, which just means that the reagents are going to be 2 ounce bottles versus the 0.75 ounce bottles that are standard. I wouldn't get the C version unless you're going to be testing a lot of pools with it, because the reagents have a shelf life of about 1 year. So if you're a homeowner and you get the K2005 C version, you probably have too much reagent for your season. I always suggest for the homeowner to get the professional 2000 series test kit, but Wayne Ikovich over at Taylor also recommends the K1005 for the homeowners, which is a good nine-way test kit. It has the ability to test the free chlorine, total chlorine, bromine, pH, acid, and base demand, which is kind of important, but you can also use an app for that. Alkalinity, hardness, and cy cyanuric acid, and it uses a DPD solution versus the 2006, which uses a deep fast DPT, FAS DPT. So DPD stands basically for diethyl P phenylene diamine. And it's basically just a chemical that will give you a chlorine reading. It's a dye, and so it'll give you a chlorine reading up to 10 parts per million. Anything over that will bleach it out. So you don't really have to know what it is. You just have to know that it tests for chlorine. And the FAS DPT goes up to, I believe, up to 30 parts per million, 20 to 30 parts per million. I think their literature says 20 parts per million, but I believe it goes higher than that. But anything over 20 parts per million is going to be really high chlorine anyway. So it just depends on what you're using the test kit for, of which one they get. I think if, of course, if you're doing commercial pools where the health department regulates free chlorine levels below 10 parts per million, you definitely want to get the Taylor K2006 Fast DPD because of the fact that it can read higher than 10 parts per million. And you can pretty much bet that the health inspector has the DPT, which is a powder, the, uh, the Fast DPT, which is the powder you're going to use to test the chlorine level, versus the standard K2005 and K1005, which uses the dye reagent DPD by itself. So one is a powder, which is a K2006, and one is a liquid reagent. So that's the main difference. The liquid reagent, 
that comes with the 2005 and 1005 kits doesn't is a die and goes to 10 parts per million. And the one that comes with the K2006 is a powder that will give you a reading up to 20 parts per million. And that's the main difference between these kits is how the chlorine reading is taken. And if you don't really need the chlorine reading above 10 parts per million, then of course you can go with the K2005 if you do pool service. And if you're a homeowner, you can go with the K2005 or the K1005. I mean, I don't really see a problem with using either of these kits. They're basically the same. The homeowner version doesn't have the Taylor watergram or the handbook for the service guy, but it's basically the same reagents and the same tester. The test file is a little bit different in the K1005 and the K2005, but essentially it's the same kit. One's made geared towards the homeowner. The other one is geared towards the pool pro. I think there's some things to know about the reagents that you should know that the shelf life, again, I mentioned at the beginning, is about one year and Taylor recommends throwing them out every season. So if you don't use them very often, you don't want to have old reagents because you're going to get a really bad reading. I always laugh when I read their storage information of how you should store the test kit and transport it. And so they want you to keep it within a temperature range of 36 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is virtually impossible in California because we have our test kits in the back of our truck, the sun hitting the back of the truck, and the temperature probably exceeds 85 degrees pretty much all summer long. And it says keep out of direct sunlight. We well, have the lid closed, so that's not a problem. You don't want to have the test kit open, and you don't want to store your test kit next to other chemicals, which again, for pool service, is kind of hard to do because you have it in the back of your truck with all the chemicals. So basically, I don't know, the reagents, you go through them quick enough, I think, that you don't have to worry about that. In my case, I go through them fast enough that I don't really have to worry about how I store it, but that does degrade them quicker. And if Taylor gives them a one-year shelf life, and let's say they're in the back of your truck and the sun's hitting it and it's 100 degrees, probably would say that shelf life is about half of that for that reason. And of course, you want to do the logical things like not mixing the caps up, so keep all the caps separate from each other, which is something that doesn't happen. When you do your testing, you have one cap off at a time. So you're not going to get the caps mixed up between the you know pH and the alkalinity. And things like that are pretty basic. There are also things that can interfere with the region test. And if you go to Taylor's website, they have a list of potential interference. And I'll read you some of this here. The first one they list is the calcium hardness or total hardness test, calcium and magnesium. And if there's any metal ions in the water, it's going to interfere with the test. They have a special test kit, the K1567, with the EDTA drop, which is a specially formulated reagent that will eliminate interference from metal ions. So if you're getting a lot of interference on your test, or if you have a pool with metal, then you can use this kit to get an accurate calcium hardness. Of course, one thing you want to do is get rid of the metals in the water, and I suggest using the sealator with a sequestering agent, either their sequestering agent or Jack's Magic, and then eliminate the metals from the water. If you're getting interference in your calcium hardness test, you're going to get an odd color when you do the reading, and that indicates metals in the pool. And then you can test for metals, take it to your local pool store, or get copper and iron test strips. Or if you have a photometer, you want to test for iron and copper and eliminate the interference there so you get an accurate calcium hardness test. So that's the first one. The next one would be the chlorine reading. I mentioned that the DPD is a dye. So anything over 10 parts per million will bleach out the indicator. And so you can dilute the water. Taylor suggests adding half deionized water with your sample water. But no one's going to order deionized water. So most people are going to just use tap water to dilute the sample to see if the chlorine is bleached out. Another thing you can do is just get a test strip. They usually read higher than the region test kits. And so you can use a test strip and check to see if there's chlorine. You know, it may, it may be an indicator. You may think there's no chlorine in the pool because it bleaches it out. But there may be a high level of chlorine instead of no chlorine. So a test strip is a great way to double check your pool water sample to make sure that the region is not being bleached out by very high chlorine. Last thing you want to do is add more chlorine to a pool where it's over 10 parts per million already. So that's one interference which I mentioned earlier that is a dye and it can be bleached out. The other one would be other halogens and oxidized manganese also may cause interference with the chlorine reading. 
So like a non-chlorine shock or an ozone system or the other halogens in this class, which probably shouldn't be in the pool, but of course you have chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, and fluorine, and so probably not going to be in the pool except chlorine and bromine, but mainly an interference from another oxidizer will cause a false chlorine reading in the pool. So be aware of that when you're using the DPD a reagent that you could get some interference with your chlorine reading, either it's too high and it bleaches out, or some other oxidizers interfering with the chlorine reading. And I should add that those are extremely rare occurrences. Typically when you do a chlorine test you're going to get a good reading and there's really nothing that interferes with it except those two things, which doesn't happen very often, you know, the high chlorine or halogens, other halogens in the water. pH, iron, above 10 parts per million, may cause negative interference. But of course, if you have iron that high in the pool, you've got some other serious issues and getting an accurate pH test is probably the least of your worries in that case. And then the pH, if you have a high sanitizer level above 10 parts per million, and then you're gonna ask, well, how are you gonna know that if it bleaches out the DPT test? But if you have a high sanitizer level above 10 parts per million, I'm just kind of being silly there, it's gonna cause the pH has turned blue, purple in color, resulting in a false high reading. You have to wait for the sanitizer level to decrease before you retest it. You can't do a dilution test with pH, kind of for obvious reasons. So just wait for the chlorine level to go down. I've only had this happen when I'm doing like a green pool cleanup and I you know, bring the chlorine level to 30 parts per million. At that point, there's no sense in getting a pH reading because you're not gonna get an accurate reading at that point. For total alkalinity, the high halogen level um, you know, like a high, anything, any oxidizer in the pool at a high level will um, change the indicator from green to red to blue to yellow. So to do this, you want to add thio sulfate prior to testing. And so you would add one drop of the R007 solution, a reagent, sorry, to the alkalinity test and then retest it and see if you get an accurate alkalinity reading that will zero out the chlorine in the alkalinity test. Really, the um, interference is something that you shouldn't have to worry about. It's something that rarely happens, but it's something that I wanted to mention here so you have an idea that if you're getting weird readings, there's probably something going on in the water causing some interference with reagents, but 95% of the time you're not going to have, or 99% of the time you're not going to have any problems doing the reagent test kit. And so don't worry about that, but it's something that you need to be aware of in case you run into it. I think one of the only tests that you're going to have trouble with as far as determining the accuracy or the level is the cyanuric acid test because that one leaves a lot uh, up to you of when the dot disappears. So it's more of a subjective test of when you actually think the dot disappears. You know, is the dot completely gone or is it just disappearing or you don't see it anymore or what point did that happen and that's your cyanuric acid reading. So you're supposed to fill the tube with the solution until the black dot disappears on the bottom. And again, this could be subjective and you don't really know what the actual reading is, but you get pretty close. So not like you're going to be way off with the cyanuric acid with the Taylor kit. I wouldn't say all the tests are subjective because some people are saying, you know, the region test kit is not accurate because you have to kind of determine the color by looking at through the tube at the color indicators on the levels there. But really the colors are pretty clear. If you're in direct sunlight and you're holding it up to eye level, you're going to see if you put the right amount of reagent drops in there, let's say, you're going to see a good color indicator of what the actual reading is. And there's really not a lot of guesswork. With the alkalinity test, once it changes color, you're going to stop counting. That'll give you an accurate alkalinity reading. So basically, I think it's not really subjective because the color differences are very easy to read on all three of these test kits. You just have to get used to reading them. You can definitely tell chlorine level of three parts per million versus two parts per million and a pH of 7.8 versus 7.2 very, very easily with the Taylor test kit. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue against the fact that they're accurate. I think that if you're looking for, of course, the most accurate test kit, you wouldn't want to get a photometer because then that will read the color for you using, you know, the color, the computer inside the device or the photometer. So those are, of course, more accurate because it takes kind of that human subjectiveness out of it. But you can get used to using a tailored test kit and you can be using it very accurately. 
I would say the only time you're going to get an accurate reading is if you're looking at it in indirect sunlight. If you're inside, like at a pool store, and you have the fluorescent lights overhead, you may not get an accurate reading or as accurate as out in direct sunlight, how it's designed to be viewed. So definitely maybe step outside and look at it if you are not sure of the reading if you're inside a store. So back to which test kit I think is best for you. If you're a homeowner, I would say the K1005 or the K2005 would be ideal for you. But the price point between the K1005 and 2005 is pretty slight. It's like 10 or $15. I would just get the K2005 and have a professional test kit. I would probably not recommend the K1004 um, or 1003. I mean, for a homeowner, that's fine. It does your pH, alkalinity, and your chlorine and free chlorine. But it doesn't do the calcium hardness, which I think is an important factor. You should kind of know your calcium hardness and your cyanuric acid doesn't do that also. So I would say if you're going to do your in-home testing by yourself, that I would go for the K1005, um, but I would just jump up to the K2005 just to have the professional test kit in your backyard. I think the other test kits are made mainly for above-ground pools or spas where the calcium hardness maybe is not that big of a deal, nor is the cyanuric acid. But to me, if you're going to buy a test kit and you're going to invest the money in it, you might as well spend the extra $20, $25 to get the test kit that does all the test factors that are important. The only reason I would get the K2006 again is if you wanted to test a pool up to 20 parts per million or free in combined chlorine. Well, combined chlorine at that level would be pretty crazy, but free chlorine. Um, so the FAS DPD is a much better kit for commercial use or for those situations where you want to get an accurate chlorine reading up to that level. It might not be necessary in most cases, and definitely you want to just go with the K2005 in most cases. And they also have a K2005 salt and a K2006 salt with the sodium chloride uh, reagent in there. So if you do have salt pools, you can go actually for the K2005 and K2006 salt. And the ranges, again, are 0 to 10 parts per million with the DPD and then 0 to 20 parts per million with the FAST DBD, and then 0 to 20 parts per million total bromine. pH is the range is 7 to 8, and then the cyanuric acid goes from 30 to 100 parts per million. And that's pretty much the ranges you're going to need anyway. Anything beyond that, you're going to need a digital meter for the pH if it drops you know, down into the 5s or 6s. And then for the cyanuric acid, they do make a test strip. I think it's uh, Lamott makes a test strip that goes to 100 parts per million in cyanuric acid. And so if you have a pool where you suspect the cyanuric acid level is above 100 parts per million, definitely try a test strip. The Lamont one that goes to 500 parts per million would be my choice in that situation. I think all the test kits are great that Taylor makes. And I think the deciding factor would be what your usage is. And again, if you wanted to get the C version, the commercial version, it just comes with two ounce reagents. And that's good for the pool pro that doesn't want to refill or get refills for the 0.75 reagents. You can definitely refill them with the larger refill bottles, but you can also just buy new reagents. I prefer just to buy new reagents and, and just not worry about refilling them. But they do sell larger reagent refills. They have a 16 ounce phenol red one, for instance. And you can buy that one and just refill your phenol red for the pH test if you wanted to do that. To me, I just think that the cost of the reagents is so low and they last quite a long time that I just get the little 75, 0.75 ounce ones and refill them. And, and not refill them, sorry. And I just throw away the old ones and use new ones. And then, of course, two ounce ones are a good size too if you use a lot of reagents. So it's a, probably the most inexpensive way do your water testing. If you compare it to, you know, the spin touch, which is about 25 cents per test or a test strip, which you get a bottle of 50 of them for, I don't know, $10. So it's 50 cents every strip. And then you have your um, other test testers, like the photometers that uses a little more expensive reagent or the reagent test strips. The Taylor test kit definitely is the most affordable way to do your water testing. So if you have a large pool route, definitely a Taylor test kit would be a go-to test kit because of that reason and because it's highly accurate. Taylor recently spent the money to get NSF certified. They weren't probably certified a couple years ago. So they're NSF NISI standard 50 certified. 
And so the test that had been independently verified is the uh, DPD free chlorine, the DPT chlor- combined chlorine, and then the FAS DPD has also been NSF certified. The total bromine has been NSF certified. Their phenol red pH test has also been NSF certified. And their cyanuric acid test has been NSF certified. So all these tests, basically it means that someone independent verified that their testing is accurate and therefore you can actually use it for commercial applications. So if you are doing a, you know, a hotel or motel or apartment complex and the health department is like, hey, are you using an NSF certified test kit? You can just break out your K2006 and show them the sticker on there and say, yeah, I'm using the same one you're using or whatever, you know. But basically, you know that it's certified and it's, been, it's accurate. And so if you do the test and it shows the chlorine levels at three parts per million, basically, you know that it's three parts per million because the the uh, DPD test has been certified, NSF approved, and it's going to be accurate. So I would say basically the only way you're going to get an inaccurate reading is if you put too many drops in when you're doing the drop test. And if you're looking at the cyanuric acid, you know, the visual determination, basically the dot would be something that's subjective. Other than that, you can use the pH, I think, is definitely the phenol red, definitely a spot on. In the alkalinity, you can't really make a mistake because you're counting the drops. Um, definitely something easy to do. Once you start using a tailored test kit, you're going to really like it and you're going to find that it's very easy to use and you're going to kind of just do it without thinking at some point. You're going to know how to use a test kit that well. For the homeowner, definitely get a tailored test kit if you're going to look, for, if you're looking for a good test kit for your pool. I think Taylor is definitely number one with reagent testing. There's really nothing in the industry that compares with it. And I also like the fact that if you do have a problem, let's say you're getting a weird reagent reading, you can actually call them and they're going to answer the phone. They actually have really good tech support for a company this large. When you call them, 1-800-837-8548. And if you have a question, of course, you can go to the website and just look for uh, taylortechnologies.com. Just type in Taylor Test Kit and it'll take you to taylortechnologies.com. And then that phone number is there. And you call that number and someone's going to answer it. And they'll actually help you out with any questions you may have about your testing or interference or weird readings or, you know, their test kit comparisons. Whatever you want to ask them, they'll definitely answer for you. And they're on the East Coast, so you're going to be using Eastern Standard Time when you call them. So if you call them too late from the West Coast, they're going to be closed. But definitely they're going to be answering the call and helping you out with any kind of problems or questions you have about the test kit. So just to summarize, I think most people, homeowners and pool pros, would be okay with the K2005 kit. And then those pool pros that need the extra insurance of knowing if the coin level is above 10 parts per million can use the K2006 kit. Everything is basically the same except for that chlorine test and what level can test that. I've also recorded some podcasts with Wayne Iversetch of Taylor. I think I got his name right. And you can just go to the uh, my website, swimmingpoollearning.com on the banner. Click on the podcast icon. In the search po- box, just type Wayne in because I don't think you're going to be able to type his last name in. So if you type Wayne in or Taylor, you're going to get the other podcast I recorded with him. And you can listen to Wayne talk about the different aspects of the test kits you know, some more things about interference and just basically all this, all the things about the Taylor test kit in general he covers in that podcast episode. And you can find it easily in the search box there. If you're in the industry and you want to enhance your business, definitely consider joining my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com and a lot of great benefits for joining there. And you can learn more at poolguycoaching.com or you can learn more from my website. Just click on that coaching icon there. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a rest of your week and God bless. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.